Best Things to Do in Acadia National Park Hi my name is John. Today in this video I am going to show top 14 amazing places to visit in Acadia National Park. Don't skip the video. Try to watch till the end. At the end if you like the video please do subscribe and give a thumbs up. Don't forget to click the bell icon to get the notification of my future video. Number 1. Drive Park Loop Road. At just 27 miles long, Acadia's Park Loop Road is one of the park's main attractions. Furthermore, despite the park being widely spread out across Mount Desert Island, the Park Loop Road serves as the primary route for incredible scenery. The Park Loop Road delivers sparkling lakes and ponds, towering granite peaks, rocky coastline, and lush forests. The best of Acadia National Park can be seen from the roadway or points along the way. Make sure you don't miss a single highlight by following our Park Loop Road tour outline below. Distance, 27 miles, including the road to the summit of Cadillac Mountain. How long does it take, depending on your travel style, driving the Park Loop Road could take all day or just a few hours. There are many places to stop and get out along the way in addition to trailheads for many of the park's famous hiking trails. Speed Limit the speed limit for the Park Look Road is 35 miles per hour or slower where posted. Abide by this in order to allow for pedestrians, bicycles, and wildlife to share the road. When to go, the Park Look Road is open from April 15 to November and closed in winter. While it is beautiful year-round, some of the best scenery can be enjoyed in fall during peak foliage, generally in early to mid-October. Weather permitting, the road is open 24 hours per day. Cost, $30 per car, valid for 7 days. This can be paid online prior to your visit, be sure to print your receipt, or purchased upon arrival at Thompson Island Picnic Area, Hulls Cove Visitor Center, Sand Beach Entrance Station, The Village Green in Bar Harbor, The Cadillac Summit Gift Shop, Jordan Pond House, or The Park Campgrounds. One-Way Travel one section of the Park Loop Road is one way only. There are multiple points where you can exit or enter, but you may only drive in one direction on this particular section. RV Travel Be aware of certain bridges that may be too low for an RV to pass and roadways where RVs are not permitted. The lowest bridge along the Park Loop Road is 10 feet 4 inches. RVs are not permitted on the Cadillac Summit Road or beyond Schooner Head Overlook. Parking one of the biggest logistical challenges of visiting Acadia National Park is parking. For this reason, if you plan to stop and take a hike, I highly recommend taking the Island Explorer, a free bus system that runs throughout the park and on Mount Desert Island. Furthermore, on the one-way section of the road between Bear Brook Picnic Area and Jordan Pond, parking in the right lane is permitted unless otherwise posted. Do not pull off of the road. All four tires must be on the pavement to protect fragile park resources. Wildlife crossing, deer frequently cross the park loop road. Keep an eye out in order to avoid a dire accident. Number 2. Cadillac Mountain. Standing about 1,530 feet in height, Cadillac Mountain wins a lot of superlatives. Not only is it the tallest mountain in the park, but it's the tallest mountain on the North Atlantic seaboard. Whether you hike up the Cadillac Summit Loop Trail or drive up the 3-1-2 mile narrow access road, go early. As the only attraction in the park that can be reached by car, Cadillac tends to draw crowds. If you do arrive by car, you should drive slowly, especially as the roadside cliffs get steep. Along the road, you'll find several small observation areas, take advantage of those before you reach the top, where the crowds and tour buses congregate. For the ultimate vistas, set your alarm clock and try to catch a sunrise here. Cadillac Mountain is the first point of the United States to greet the rising sun's rays from early October to early March, and visitors assure it is a spectacular sight to see. While recent travelers said a trip to Acadia isn't complete without a stop at Cadillac Mountain, they also cautioned the area gets crowded, even in the early morning hours, some reported arriving two hours before sunrise. If you're visiting during the winter months, 
you'll have to hike the Cadillac Summit Loop Trail, the park closes down the access road for the winter season. Pack blankets and hold onto your hats, too, as it gets chillier as you ascend. Number 3. Go Hiking. Acadia National Park's Best Hikes. Jordan Cliffs Trail Hike Acadia National Park has over 120 miles of trails beckoning for exploration. From family strolls along the rocky coastlines to strenuous and exposed scrambles to the tops of the majestic granite peaks, Acadia's large trail system has something for everyone. Because there are so many interconnecting trails and carriage roads, numerous interesting options exist for loop hikes. Carry the map adventures Acadia National Park Trail Map to help navigate the maze of trails. Cadillac Mountain Summit Loop Cadillac Mountain Summit Loop, Acadia National Park No trip to Acadia is complete without a visit to the top of Cadillac Mountain. Cadillac Mountain is the highest peak on Mount Desert Island and is one of the first spots in the United States to catch the morning sun. Waking up very early for a pre-dawn drive to the summit to take in first direct sunlight is an Acadia classic. A short and easy loop trail wanders around the summit offering great views in all directions. Be careful to not follow one of the longer trails down the mountain unless you intend to. Number 4. Sand Beach. Sand Beach, in Acadia National Park, is nestled in a small inlet between the granite mountains and rocky shores of Mount Desert Island. This gorgeous 290-yard-long beach is one of the most popular points of interest on the island. The thousands of years of pounding surf created a beach that is largely comprised of unique sand of shell fragments. The ocean temperature rarely exceeds 55 degrees in the summer and there is approximately one half cup of salt per gallon of ocean water. Access to Sand Beach is provided via the Park Loop Road just after the Park Fee Entrance Station on the northeastern side of the island. A lifeguard is on duty from Memorial Day through Labor Day. Changing rooms and restrooms are located next to the parking area. The Island Explorer Shuttle Bus has a pickup and drop-off point here and stops about every half hour during normal season hours. The mountain that you will notice from the parking area is likely the Beehive. Look closely and you might see people climbing toward the summit. There is a very nice oceanside trail, accessed from the upper parking lot, that follows the shore's edge past Thunder Hole and arrives at Otter Cliff to the south. This is well worth the trek. Number 5. Thunder Hole. Thunder Hole is 2 miles from Sand Beach. The channel view is accessed by concrete stairs and a handicap accessible ramp with protective railings. This is the safest area in which to view the waves during ocean storms. It is recommended that you do not leave the walkway onto the ledges during rough weather. The ledges are often wet and slippery and the granite rock uneven and unforgiving. People have been knocked off the ledges into the ocean here. Thunder Hole also offers a lovely little gift shop and information center. This gift shop was the first ranger station in Acadia National Park. The Island Explorer free bus service stops here frequently during the summer months. The Thunder Hole restrooms are also located in the parking area. Number 6. Jordan Pond House. When you think of idyllic spots in Acadia, Jordan Pond probably comes to mind with its pristine calm waters surrounded by lush, majestic mountains in all directions. The Jordan Pond House, rated one of the best restaurants in any national park, is conveniently located on the south side of the pond and offers up wondrous views of the Bubbles, South Bubble Mountain and North Bubble Mountain, across the water. Before or after having afternoon tea and popovers, reservations recommended, a stroll around the Jordan Pond Trail, Jordan Pond Loop, is a wonderful leisurely activity while offering up great scenery. The most convenient place to park to hike the Jordan Pond Loop is the Jordan Pond North Parking Lot, located along the Park Loop Road roughly 3.7 miles south of the turnoff for the Cadillac Mountain Summit Road. This section of the road is two-way. Limited parking is also available in the smaller Jordan Pond House parking lot. Both lots tend to fill up and be quite crowded on summer afternoons. From the Jordan Pond North lot, 
walk northwest to the boat launch and you will be treated to the classic view of the bubbles across the waters. Note, while the water may look inviting, wading and swimming is not permitted as this is a public water source. Swimming is permitted in other lakes such as Echo Lake. Number 7. Carriage Roads. In addition to Acadia's beautiful hiking trails, there are also over 45 miles of carriage roads built by millionaire philanthropist John D. Rockefeller Jr. between 1913 and 1940. Originally conceived as a way to give city folk an escape to the natural world, the carriage road system wanders through some of the best forested and lakeside scenery and is enjoyed by bikers, hikers, and horseback and horse-drawn carriage riders alike. Rockefeller also financed, designed, and supervised the construction of 16 majestic stone bridges that were built at several stream and gorge crossings throughout the carriage road system. Since each bridge is a unique work of art, it is fun to try to visit them all. To navigate the trails and carriage roads of Acadia and find the classic stone bridges, get a copy of the wonderful Map Adventures Acadia National Park Trail Map or Diane Abrell's Carriage Roads of Acadia, a pocket guide. Number 8. Take a Boat Tour of Acadia. Acadia National Park is celebrating the centennial year of its founding in 1916, a bold move that forever protected the grand landscape of rocky ocean coastline and pink granite mountains on Mount Desert Island, a special place on the main coast and one of the most beloved and visited parks in the United States. For a great adventure this summer, take any of the myriad guided cruises amid the wildlife-rich bays and islands and out to the open sea, for a unique perspective of the park's natural beauty. All tours feature a trained naturalist on board, and some commercial outfits offer interpretive tours narrated by an Acadia National Park ranger, complete with the classic flat-brimmed hat and green and grey uniform. Either way you'll be regaled with wonderful stories of the park and its colourful history. Reservations are a must on all boat tours. Plan to arrive at least 30 minutes before departure and have your tickets ready. Tour boats are equipped with heated cabins and restrooms, and some provide a galley with food and beverage service. Warm clothing is essential as a hedge against the variable ocean weather, so be prepared with several layers and a windproof slash waterproof shell, comfortable walking shoes, sunglasses, sunscreen, hat, water, and snacks. Pack the binoculars and camera, too. Number 9. Base Harbor Head Lighthouse at Sunset. Constructed in 1876, the Base Harbor Head Light is one of the most famous landmarks of Acadia National Park and is arguably the most iconic and photographed lighthouse in all of Maine. The lighthouse is located at the southernmost tip of Mount Desert Island just south of the town of Base Harbor and close to the nearby family-friendly Wonderland and Ship Harbor trails. While the actual lighthouse compound is fenced off, tourists are welcome to drive to the lighthouse and take a short 10-minute walk to a viewing platform to see the beautiful old lighthouse along the rugged coastline. From the parking area, take the well-groomed trail east into the woods along the perimeter of the lighthouse compound. A wooden boardwalk and stairway lead down to the viewing area where you can catch a shot of the lighthouse with the rugged coastline in the foreground you can randomly scramble on the rocks to get a better view, but take care as many of the rocks, especially those covered in black slime, are notoriously slippery. Back at the parking lot, you can also walk around to the right, west, to stand right next to the lighthouse and bell, please obey all posted signs. Number 10. Echo Lake. Echo Lake is south of Sumsville and just north of Southwest Harbor on Mount Desert Island, Maine, on the west side of Route 102. It is a gorgeous freshwater lake in a spectacular setting. The maximum water depth is 66 feet. Echo Lake Beach is on the southern shore and is staffed by a lifeguard from Memorial Day through Labor Day. The beach has become the most popular freshwater swimming site on the island for locals and visitors in the know. The water is much warmer than the ocean water temperature at Sand Beach in the park. This is a good beach for kids and families as it is relatively shallow for quite a distance. Right beside Beach Mountain. When you arrive at the parking area you can't help notice the high cliffs along the western side. These are part of 839-foot, 
256 meter, high beach mountain. The cliffs continue along much of the western shore of Echo Lake. A hiking trail leads up the side of the cliffs from the parking area. From the beach, you can easily see climbers as they recede into the distance and keep getting smaller. This usually becomes a topic of conversation for beach visitors. Note, there is another much less challenging trail that leads to the top from the west side of the mountain. Number 11. See the lakes on the gorge trail. While it does start from the junction with the Kibo Brook Trail, most people start from the Gorge Path parking area on the Park Loop Road. From here, you'll descend off the road down stone stairs next to a huge stone arch that bridges the road. A 0.5 mile easy trek through the woods will warm you up before the path starts uphill in earnest following the gorge between Cadillac and Door Mountains. The path is steep, more like hiking up a river of rock, you won't see much dirt on this entire hike, with stone stairs and a small stream you'll be following. The trees provide nice cover, so even on a warm day, you won't have much sun exposure. Once you reach the junction of the Gorge Path, Schiff Path, and A. Murray Young Path trails, hook a right and start climbing. It's all up steep rock faces to the summit of Cadillac Mountain, but you'll be rewarded with beautiful views of the gorge you just completed and Door Mountain across the way to the east. If you look carefully, you can see the signpost denoting the summit of Door Mountain and sometimes other hikers descending into the gorge down the ship path. Number 12. Explore Bar Harbor. Bar Harbor sits in a particular coastal part of the state referred to as Down East Maine. This term has a long history dating back over 200 years when large schooners, filled with goods on their way back to England or elsewhere in Europe, had to sail downwind to the east from the larger population centers like Boston, Philadelphia, and New York, hence, down east. While visiting, you will often hear the telltale sound of a Mainer speaking with that special down east accent where the R sound is being dropped. Bar Harbor is pronounced like Bahaba and Lobster sounds like Lobsta. You may want to begin practicing now. Bar Harbor Shore Path There is a picturesque and historic shore path you should walk on at least one morning during your visit or any time during the day. The path, originally created about 1880, begins near the town pier and Agamont Park, and continues for about one half a mile along the eastern shore of town. Offshore to the east are the four porcupine islands which are especially beautiful at sunrise. Number 13. Visit Skudik Point. Visitor Center and Skudik Woods Campground. Less than one mile from the start of the Loop Road is the Visitor Center and the entrance to the campground on the left. Visitors who do not have an Acadia Park Pass need to stop here. The Skudik Woods Campground has 91 sites mostly for tents, but some sites can accommodate RVs. Camping is by reservation only. Fraser Point. Located 1.5 miles down the Loop Road, Fraser Point is a grassy picnic area facing the waters of Winter Harbor. While this is a pleasant stopping point for groups, the scenery gets more dramatic further into the park. Skudik Point, Acadia National Park Skudik Point The southern tip of the Skudik Peninsula, located on Big Moose Island, which is actually attached to the mainland, despite its name, is probably the highlight of any visit to the area. From the Park Loop Road, follow the Spur Skudik Point Road, Ari Cove Road, south to the large parking area. From there, you can walk out and freely explore the massive rock formations created by ancient volcanic activity. On a clear day, you can see majestic Mount Desert Island several miles to the west. And of course, do not get too close to the water as the wet lower rock formations can be extremely slippery and the treacherous waves can be fatal if you get sucked into the ocean. Number 14. Spend the day at Isle O'Oat. Standing at the eastern entrance of Penobscot Bay, Isle O'Oat isn't the most remote of Maine's islands that distinction goes to Matinicus, about 15 miles to the southwest. But this 8,000-acre chunk of land, half of which belongs to Acadia National Park, still makes for a great escape from civilization. Home to fewer than 80 year-round residents, including best-selling author Linda Greenlaw, Isle O'Oat has a lone harbor village, with a church, a school, 
a general store, and a town hall. Its waters are busy with fishing and cruising boats, its landscape is threaded with walking paths and biking roads. With no inns or motels, and offering spotty cell service at best, Ilo Oat, pronounced Ilaho, isn't your typical vacation idol, although a few hundred people do have summer homes here. For most visitors, it's instead an adventure destination, ideal for day trippers who are comfortable leaving their cars on the mainland and eager to spend hours walking or biking in rustic and often rugged surroundings. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe our channel and share this video. Once again thank you very much.